Hello everyone and welcome back to part 4 on how to create a Friday Night Funkin' Game in Roblox and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make the speakers work and much more. So let's start. So in the past tutorial I've showed you how to make the arrows and make them go up and down and other stuff like that. What we'll be doing now is making these things work. Let me just fix my graphics quality. So we'll be making the speakers work as well as changing the text of this. So stop your game, hold alt and press the speaker where you have the proximity prompt. So hold alt and press the speaker. And then you want to search proximity prompt and you want to change the action text to whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to change it to, for example, battle or maybe start and I'm going to do that for the same for the other speaker for the other proximity prompt so I'm going to change the action st action text to start and then inside of uh, this thing we'll first rename the stadium to let's rename it to 1 for the first stadium and We'll get the first mic and we're gonna add a bull value inside of it and we're gonna rename it to uh equipped or something. Uh, let's rename it to um full and we'll copy it and paste it inside of the second mic. And then we're gonna add a script inside of this. So local uh uh, we're gonna do script dot parent dot first mic dot first mic dot um, speaker dot proximity prompt dot triggered. Oh, sorry, we're not gonna be doing this. Before we do that, we will select your speaker and make sure you have a model called first mic. And inside of it, make sure you have something a part or something called speaker that you will have the proximity prompt on. And just duplicate it and rename it to second um, second uh, mic. Now we're gonna create a variable for the first mic. Local first mic is equal to script dot parent confine first child first mic. And then for the local second mic is equal to script dot parent confine first child um, second mic uh, second mic. All right, so what we'll be doing now is I will firstly see what these are. These are just, yes, these are, these are the teleport parts. So we're gonna create a variable for those. Local tp1 is equal to script.parent dot um, first or script.parent confine to child first and local tp2 is equal to script parent confined first child um second now you want to make sure that you have two parts inside of you i think i already said this in the past tutorial you want to make sure that you have two parts one is one of them is going to be named first and the other one is going to be named second make sure that they're both anchored so i'll select both of them and make sure they're anchored and that can collide and checked and now yeah, let's go to this script. We're gonna rename this to battle. And what we're gonna do here is first mic dot proximity proximity prompt dot triggered call connect function um triggered I think I spelled it wrong triggered uh connect function and we'll check if first mic dot full dot values not equal to true then we'll put first mic dot full dot value to true and then we'll uh, set the first mic dot um no we'll get the player here layer and then we'll create a variable for the player's character 
local player, local character. Is equal to player dot character or player dot character added common weight. And in here we will put a I think yes we're gonna teleport the character so character dot a humanoid root part dot c frame is equal to cp one dot c frame and we will do character dot humanoid dot walk speed is equal to sixteen uh to zero sorry to zero and then I think if we go ahead and play the game and we go to the first mic we should get teleported to the other place so let's let's see let's firstly go here so this is the first mic if we go here it's not working and I think we have an error proximity pumps is not a valid member for workspace dot first mic okay so first mic dot speaker dot speaker dot proximity pump May again make sure your structure is the same as mine so I have a, a microphone model inside of it there is a speaker uh, part and add a proximity prompt to it now if you go ahead and play the game we still have a problem triggered did I spell it wrong trigger yes I definitely spelled it wrong let me see script dot parent dot um first mic dot uh speaker dot triggered did I spell it wrong dot speaker dot proximity one dot triggered yes I definitely spelled it wrong I thought I spelled it right okay never mind let's test it now and see how it is okay so we don't get any errors I think yes we don't and if we go here and we can't move anymore and now we'll start by making the animations what we'll firstly do is prevent the player from jumping and I think if you go ahead and change the jump power of the player to zero uh, jump height to zero you can jump I think yes all right so jump height the default one is 7.2 so player character dot humanoid character dot humanoid dot jump height is equal to zero and we're gonna have a humanoid inside of uh, the workspace just to test so the jump height or maybe jump power yeah let's change the jump power jump power is equal to zero and we're just gonna get rid of this humanoid and if we go ahead and test the game now we should not be able to jump and it's not able to move so if we go ahead and play the game now let's start we can we can jump and we need to fix this so if I go here I select this I uh, select so the jump power. I think we need to change the jump height. Jump height. Jump height is equal to zero. And I think that should be working out. Okay, so it's loaded. If we go ahead and do this as you can see you can't jump anymore even though i'm spamming my jump bar now we need to disable this thing after they do this so let's do that right now so proximity prompt so uh first mic dot speaker dot proximity prompt dot enabled is equal to false and now we should not be able to see the proximity prompt when we call the function so if you go here and as you can see you get teleported and we can't do that anymore but as you can see we have 
this thing, which we don't, but we don't want. So I think to fix this, if we go ahead and instead of disabling it, uh, action text, if we go ahead and enable this. Okay, so I think uh, there is a, what's this? Okay, so we're not going to be doing that. I think, I'm pretty sure there is something called uh, uh, localization table. There is nothing called transparency or anything. So I think we just gotta change the, if we disable this, if we disable it, and we select the other one, and we change its max activation distance to five, I don't think we'll be able to do that, yes. So, to fix this, all you have to do is to set the proximity prompts, uh, the, both of the proximity prompts, change their uh, a max activation distance to five, and you should not be able to have this problem anymore. So let's try this out, and see how, how it looks, and if it works. So if we go ahead and touch this, as you can see, we see it, and if this does not work, just change it to a lower number. Alright, what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same thing for the other proximity prompt, but before we do that, yes, I think we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we'll set, we'll fire a mode event. So let's go ahead and... And we're gonna add a remote, a folder inside of replicated storage, and rename it to remotes. And we're gonna add a remote event to it, and we'll set its name to uh, waiting for, or maybe status, or change status, change status. And then we'll add inside of replicated storage, we'll add a string file. We're not, we're not going to be doing that. What we'll be doing is in here, we'll put these arrows down. And maybe we're going to have a hmm. Yes, maybe you can have like a text label in here, which will be the status. So if we change its background transparency to one and the text to text scale to true and text color to white and the text to wait in to just test and the font to a font that you like. For me, I'm going to be using it for the Roka one, for Doka one, I think. And we're going to change the text stroke transparency to zero. And now we have this. We'll make sure that the text is set to nothing. And we'll add inside of the main client script, we'll go down and we're going to remove this while loop. Just remove the while loop and keep, keep whatever is inside of it. And then what we'll be doing is game dot replicated storage dot dot um change status dot on client event call connect function uh script dot parent dot main dot uh what do we call it text label oh image firstly select it and convert it to scale. So go to unit conversion at scale, I'll leave a link to this button in the description. And we'll rename it to game status, game status, and script.main.main.game status dot text is equal to waiting for another, waiting for another layer. And now, 
uh, I think if we go ahead and fire the remote event from here, from the server script, game.replicatorsource.remote. Um, uh, change status on fire client uh, player, and that should be working. Now, if you go ahead and play the game, we need to make it so that when another player joins, it does not become the same. So let's go here and hit start and it says waiting for another player. And now if we go ahead and um, I think we're going to send the player and the uh, script.parent and in here will in the client script we will get the stadium and we'll print or maybe that's it what we're gonna do now is in here yes we're gonna repeat put a repeat wait uh point Eight until uh, workspace gonna find first child stadium stadium. Mm, I think yes, just copy this space here. Dot name uh, gonna find first child stadium. Uh, we send scope of parents stadium. Dot name dot first mic dot full dot value is equal equal to true and workspace on find first child stadium stadium dot name dot second mic dot uh, full dot value is equal to true is equal equal to true and then Let's put this here, and that should be it. What we'll be doing now is we're gonna be copying this and paste it here. And instead of this, we'll change everything that says first mic to second mic. And what we will be doing is changing the TP1 to TP2. And now if we go ahead and test the game with two players. So if you go ahead and hit start a two player server. I haven't done that in a while since I have made the manga series. Which reminds me of a lot of stuff. So let's wait for this to load and see how this is. So let's go here and press start and it says waiting for another player and when we go over here it says what it still says waiting for another player but this is not a problem though because we have not told it to to say uh, game start so script dot parent dot main dot game status dot text is equal to started. And if we go ahead and start the game, another two player server, I mean. We should be able to just change the text of the text label to game start. So let's go there. Let's go for the first one and waiting for another player. And if we go to the second one, it says start for both of the players. Now, what we will be doing is we're gonna enable the GY for the left and down and up and right arrows. So let's do, let's firstly make sure that they're all invisible. So make sure that the visible property is unchecked. And what we'll be doing after this is 
uh, we have a an error for the tables, but I think what we'll be doing is script dot parent dot main dot uh, down dot visible is equal to true and then script dot parent dot main dot uh, left dot visible is equal to true is equal to true and script dot parent dot main dot uh, right dot right dot visible is equal to true and script dot parent dot main dot um uh I think up dot visible is equal to true and that should be it now they should become visible when everyone joins the game and i think in here we'll put an um, so what if somebody leaves the game it should stay say uh, waiting for another player forever so we gotta fix that and the way we're gonna do that is by adding an or so or uh, and both of them are set to false if both of them are set to false then we're gonna set the text to nothing again so let's go here and i think i already know what's gonna happen so they're not visible yet which means we've done an, an error oh no we didn't because now they're both visible but as you can see the problem is when somebody resets their character this guy is going to be stuck here forever so to fix this all we have to do is to do or in here in this long line of code we're gonna copy this and we're gonna put or uh, and paste in what, what you just copied and we're gonna set this to false and paste it again and change the second mic to first mic dot full dot value is equal equal to false and then in here uh, I think I can scroll more we'll drop a line and in here we'll check if uh, workspace dot on find first child stadium dot name uh, dot first mic dot full value is equal equal to false and or we can just copy this just copy this everything after the or and paste it here so if that then we will put an else else and we're gonna copy all of this and paste it here and now if you go ahead and put something here so let's say if workspace confined for child studying dot name dot second dot full dot value is equal, equal to false and that is equal equal to false what we'll be doing is um, set the text so script dot parent dot game status status dot text is equal to and uh, to an empty string which is this now if we go ahead and i think i think play yeah if we go ahead and play the game or before we do that we will go to our battle scripts and we'll add a uh, button so let's add a button inside of the main screen GUI so let's add a text button let's put it right here on the middle and let's go to plugins in the conversion scale and we'll change the text scale property to true and the text color to white and we're gonna change the text to leave and we'll change the 
font to the font that you like and the background color to the background color that you want. I'm going to go with this red and I'm going to add a white corner to it and we're going to change this to 0.5 comma 0 maybe 0.1 comma 0 maybe 0.3 comma 0 which looks pretty nice and we're going to make sure it's invisible let's rename it to leave and leave leave and we're going to make sure it's invisible and what we'll be doing is inside of our main client script we'll scroll all the way down and in here we will change the i think we should have uh, in here we're gonna do script dot parent dot leave uh, dot main dot leave leave dot visible is equal to true and we're gonna copy this line of code and we're gonna uh, and we're gonna paste it here but instead we're gonna set it to false and in here we're gonna set it to false and then we're gonna have a mouse button click mouse button one click event so we will put in a script dot parent dot main dot leave dot mouse button one click connect function and we'll say mm, or let's put that here let's put it here and I'll connect function and we're inside of our remote folder we're gonna add a remote event and rename it to leave with a e so what we'll be doing when they press leave is game dot replicated storage dot notes dot leave confire server and we're gonna send the stadium or maybe the player in the stadium our server i think you gotta send the player and the stadium so let's do player comma stadium I'm not sure though. What we'll be doing now is in here inside of our battle script, we'll be putting a game or to get a storage. Well, let's put that in a main service script. So inside of service script service, we're going to add a script and we're going to rename it to main underscore server. So in here, we'll have a player added event, the game players dot player added conk next function the other which we'll use later and in here we're gonna have a remote event so in the replicator storage dot remotes dot leave dot on server event conk next function player comma stadium so we'll put local state local uh, main stadium is equal to workspace confined first child uh, stadium dot name so stadium dot name and then we're gonna loop through or maybe the yes we're gonna loop through for i can be in pairs uh, main stadium and we'll get the sentence so um uh, workspace can get descendants which uh, I don't know how we spell it so then can get descendants so let's just delete that do if v dot name is equal equal to four then uh, v dot value is equal to false and then we'll change the player's walk speed so player dot human dot character dot humanoid dot walk speed is equal to 16 which is the default walk speed and then player dot character dot humanoid dot uh, jump height 
is equal to 7.2 which is the def default jump height and I think that's all we need to do let's go back to this battle script and I think that's basically it yes so we've done that now let's see if that works script.parent.main.leave dot visible the script of parent dot main dot leave dot visible is equal to false and in here we will be removing this leave dot visible is equal to false and we'll be removing this too and now if we go ahead and play the game I think we should be able to leave that and in the next episode I'm gonna be showing you how to disable resetting the character which we don't want so we don't have to mess around with the humanoid, dot died, and other stuff, which will take way too long. So I'm just going to be disabling the resetting function. So if we go here, if we press start, it says waiting for another player, and it says leave. Now, if we go ahead and press leave, this happens, which is good, but we can't, um, we can't start another game. So, this shows us that we need to fix a lot more stuff. So, in here, we will put script dot parent dot main dot uh, game status dot text is equal to empty string. And in the battle script or in the main server, what we'll be doing is in here. We're gonna do else if v dot name is equal equal to uh, proximity proximity prompt. Then v dot enabled is equal to true. And now if you go ahead and test the game with two players, it should be working just fine. Or maybe. So let's test and see how this looks. So if we go here and we press E to start and we leave, and the thing is not enabled anymore, which we don't want. So I think I'm guessing we got an error, or maybe not. So make sure that you spell proximity prompt right, I think. Now, I already spelled it right, so let's go ahead and remove this. Just copy this, and we're going to be removing this. Let's add an end, and if v.name is equal equal to if v dot name is equal to proximity prompt then v dot enabled is equal to true and now let's go here and see what we do so i said the enable property to force so let's see if that works now it should work i think wait does it even change the uh Color. Let me just do the properties and this. Not the color. I mean the value. So first mic full. So let's go to the first mic and press E. And now full is equal to true. If we do this, it's still set to true, which we don't want. So let's clean up. And I think I'm pretty sure the error is from this. So. Hmm. Wait, what if we just print stadium? Let me just go ahead and play the game real quick. And see if this works. So I'm gonna go here and copy this. 
and let's see if it printed. So it means bar is broke. So now I'm 100% sure of what the error is. So it's not something from here. It's basically just this. We just gotta send the stadium and not the player. Now in here we'll remove this print stadium and it should be working just fine. So now if we go ahead and test the game with two players, I'm pretty sure this will fix our problem. Since we were looking through the player, which we don't want at all. So if you go to the workspace and uh, go to one, go to first mic, cool. Let's go ahead and the battle. If you press leave, yes, as you can see, we can do that again, and we can even press leave again, and it works perfectly. But what if we go here and we go ahead and press and we both start? So it says start, but what if somebody leaves? It should say leave for this person, but this guy is still stuck here. So we just press leave. We'll be fixing this in the, in the next tutorial, but before we leave, I think we just have to make the arrows invisible. So let's copy this, and when they press the leave button, we're gonna make sure that they're false, so they're not visible, and I think uh, after this, this is going to be it for today's tutorial. If this helped, make sure to subscribe, share the video, drop a like, and I'll see you all in the next one. And I'm also pretty happy with the progress, and I also changed my outfit. For some reason, I kind of like this one more, and I think it looks better. But yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!